Chances are lately, you've been on a lot of Zooms. This coronavirus has had so many of us working from home, working from remotely, working in a way where we're not accustomed. But the thing is, we've really adapted to it quickly. And whether it's Zoom or GoToMeeting or WebEx or any of the others out there, we've become accustomed now to speaking to each other through video. The thing is, not everybody knows how to do it right. In this video, I'm gonna teach you some tips and tricks on how to have the best quality Zoom videos. So stay tuned. The first thing that you really have to think about when you're doing your video is lighting. So many of us just set up the webcam or use the camera in our laptop and we don't really think about the lighting that's shining on our face. Yet that's the most important aspect of the video. When you're doing the lighting for your Zoom, make sure the lighting's hitting your face. Don't do videos where there is a window behind you or some form of backlighting that makes you really, really dark. That makes it difficult for the others to see you. If you can, use natural light. I mean, the best light we can use is the sunlight coming onto our face through the windows. Position yourself in such a way so you can get that sunlight. If that's not possible, you can use artificial light. You can use a ring light or some other photography light, something behind your camera just to brighten your face. I'll put some links to some ideas in the show notes for you. Number two, control your background. I mentioned lighting and not having backlighting in the background. Don't have a window, for example, but also be thoughtful of what else you have in the background. If you have limited space and you're shooting this from your room, make sure the bed is made. If you have to shoot this from your kitchen, make sure there's not a mess surrounding you or there are not people playing around in the background. And that's the third thing. Set a private place for you to do your videos, if at all possible, so that people aren't walking in and out of frame behind you. It can get really distracting. I was recently on a video. It was pretty funny. We had a group of us, I think there were maybe 10 of us on the video, and this one lady was speaking and behind her walked her teenage son. No shirt, shorts, making faces and gestures at us, wandered right through. Needless to say, she leapt up and had to have a talk with him. Fortunately, she was muted. Which leads me to item number three. Hit the mute button. We don't need to hear everything that's going on in the background. When it's not your speaking part, hit mute. Get really good at that. Mute when you're not speaking. When it's your time, unmute. It'll make this so much easier on everybody else in the Zoom meeting. Now there are some things that can be a little bit more flattering for you. Many of us use the camera that's on our laptop. And because of that, we tend to look downward. Well, looking down at the camera is not the most flattering view. You see nose hair sometimes, you see some extra chins. If you want a really flattering view, set the camera to be slightly above eye level. This will sharpen out your face and it'll make you look a lot better in your meeting. If you're still using the camera in your laptop, just raise the laptop up a little higher. This will make it so that you can still get that view from above, but using the technology you already have. Now what I find frequently that happens in these Zoom meetings is somebody might have two monitors, or maybe they purchased a secondary camera, and the camera is not in line with the Zoom itself, so that when they are speaking or when they are participating in the Zoom, they're looking off to the side. They are looking at everybody in the frame, but they're not looking at the camera, so it appears that they're distracted. A way you can get around this is to align the Zoom meeting directly underneath your camera. If you have an external camera, you can move that around. If it's an external monitor with a camera on top of it, you can move that around. If you're in a situation where you have to use the camera in your laptop, but you have an external monitor, I would encourage you to put the meeting video on your laptop as well and raise that up. That way, when you're looking at the people on the screen, they're only slightly below the camera. And so it doesn't really look like you're looking away. When it comes to choosing clothing, Obviously, you're dressing to your audience. Today, I'm a little bit more casual. This is a little bit more casual video. But what I am doing is I'm wearing a solid color. 
Some patterns are okay, but be really careful of plaids and checks and things like that. They can create a moire pattern with the video, and sometimes that gets really distracting. If you can, choose a solid color. It just makes it a lot easier. I also encourage you to dress to the level of professionalism of your audience. Yes, things are a lot more casual now. Yes, we're dealing with families and other activities going on around us during these Zoom meetings. But if you can look a little bit more professional when the meeting calls for it, you should dress that way. Nobody needs to know you're wearing shorts underneath the desk. And the last thing I would encourage you to do is to fill the frame. Set the camera up so that your body and your head, they take up about a third of the frame. This will allow the camera to get enough detail on your expressions so that uh, people can make out what you are, are thinking. If you're not filling the frame and you're too far back, it makes it a lot more difficult for your audience. So fill the frame. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you are able to have more professional, more successful Zoom meetings, and I hope that you are able to learn a few tips from me today. If you found this interesting, please subscribe, hit the like button, and give me some comments. I would love to hear more from you. Thanks again. See you in the next video.